let's talk about my favorite article in the code, Article 240, Overcurrent Protection. 240.4, Protection of Conductors. Listen, it, it doesn't get much more important than 240.4. If you're new to the NEC, if you're an apprentice, or maybe if, even if you're a journeyman, you've been in the game for a while and you're not really confident in the code, 240.4 is critical. Uh, 240.4 tells us how to keep wires from melting. It, it's that simple, okay? Overcurrent protection is required for conductors and it's required for equipment. Now we provide overcurrent protection for equipment in the equipment article, okay? If you wanna know how to keep your water heater from overheating, <laughs> uh, you go to Article 422. If you're worried about uh, transformers, you go to Article 450. But the conductors themselves are taken care of here in 240.4 really important section. Adjustable trip circuit breakers are now addressed. New allowances for copper clad aluminum conductors have been added and dwelling unit feeders and services are now included in this section. All right, so 240.4 starts with a general requirement that says except as allowed in A through H, conductors must have overcurrent protection rated at or below their ampacity. All right, the ampacity of a conductor is the amount of current that, that the conductor can carry forever without exceeding its temperature rating. So here we have some 750 Casey mill aluminum. If we look at the 75 degree ampacity, and the reason we're doing that is because of 110.14C for the termination ratings, it has an ampacity of 385 amps. This rule means you can put a maximum 385 amp breaker or fuse to protect this 385 amp wire, except as allowed in A through H. Now we're going to read a couple of these items in A through H, starting with B. Now B is probably the rule that you need to know more than any. Overcurrent devices rated 800 amps and less. Let's stop for a minute. How often are you putting in breakers or fuses that are larger than 800 amps? I mean, certainly we, you know, they're out there. I, I've installed plenty, but seriously, 99% of the breakers and fuses you install are 800 amps or less. Well, this is the rule for 99% of the breakers and fuses you install. You, you probably ought to know this rule. The next higher standard overcurrent device can be used if the circuit does not supply more than one receptacle. Well, let me give you a little news flash here. Go back to 210.21, I think it is, and, and it's going to say, listen, you, you can't have more than one outlet on a circuit if the circuit is rated more than 50 amps. Well, the rules for 15 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 amp brand circuits are pretty simple, right? These rules here that we're talking about, 240.4b, is basically above 50 amps up to 800 amps, all right? So item one, forget item one, very seldom is that gonna be a problem. Number two, this is what you need to understand. You can use the next higher standard overcurrent device if the ampacity of the conductor does not correspond to a standard rating of overcurrent device, all right? And then number three, this allowance ends at 800 amps. Okay, I've got a piece of 500 KC mil copper. I go to the 75 degree column because I'm terminating on a 75 degree rated breaker, going to a 75 degree rated panel board, which is always going to be the case. So I'm limited to the 75 degree ampacity. 500 KC mil is 380 amps at the 75 degree column. So that means maximum 380 amp breaker, right? Maximum 380 amp fuse. Well, you go to table 240.6a and you find out there's no such thing as a 380 amp circuit breaker or if there is it's certainly not one that we consider a standard so this rule says look go ahead and put it on a 400 amp breaker and you're good to go now one thing you always need to remember is that the conductors have to carry the load if the load is 390 amps well the conductor has to carry the load and the overcurrent device has to carry the load. So you always have to satisfy the load requirements as well. But generally speaking, you got a 380 amp wire, put it on a 400 amp breaker, and you're good to go. If items one, two, and three are satisfied, which we just read, 
An adjustable trip circuit breaker can also be set to the next higher standard setting if its access is restricted as described in 240.6c. Okay, so this is kind of a subtle one. I think this is my friend Don that got this into the code, one of the sharpest guys I know. Um, <laughs> we didn't talk about this in previous versions of the code, and, and I, I never I never caught it. You know, it's just one of those things you take for granted. But if I have, look at this circuit breaker. This thing is rated 1,200 amps. Now let's go back here. It says, look, if the overcurrent device does not exceed 800 amps, this is rated 1,200 amps. Well, yeah, but, but the setting is the adjusted setting, right? If I dial it back to 800 amps, can I still protect two 500 kc mil, right, which is good for 760? Can I protect 760 amps with an 800 amp breaker or fuse? Yes. Can I protect two 500 kc mils? Can I protect 760 amp wire with an adjustable trip breaker rated 1200 amps but dialed back to 800? Yes. You could argue that in previous versions of the code. Now, in Article 100, if you go to overcurrent device, um, there are a couple of definitions in Article 100 under overcurrent device. And one of them was adjustable or setting, I think it was. And they, they took out part of the definition that really addressed adjustable trip circuit breakers. So here's the thing. This is a really nice clarification. Maybe it was already allowed, maybe it wasn't, but I think this is something that, that is a good hole to fix in the NEC. Let's keep reading. 240.4D, unless allowed in E or G, and don't neglect that part, overcurrent protection for small conductors must not exceed the values in 240.4D for 18 gauge through 10 gauge conductors. All right, now this is the rule that we all know and love, where it says, listen, you got 12 gauge copper, 20 amp breaker maximum. You got 14 gauge copper, 15 amp breaker maximum. 12 gauge, you know, right, we, we know and love, right, between 18 gauge and 10 gauge. Well, there was a push in the 2023 NEC, and we talked about this a little bit in Article 210, and we'll talk about it more in Article 310, but there was a push in the 2020 NEC, 2023 NEC, to add smaller size copper and copper clad aluminum conductors. We wanted to add 16 gauge copper and 14 gauge copper clad aluminum. Well, those efforts ultimately failed, but if they pass in future editions of the code, we kind of have the framework already in place, right? We addressed 10 amp circuits in Article 210. We addressed smaller size conductors in Article 210. Here we're going to tell you how to protect them in Article 240. And if they ever change it in Article 310 to actually allow it, then we'll be ready to go. So, unless allowed in E or G, overcurrent protection for 14 gauge copper clad aluminum must not exceed 10 amps. Uh, the continuous load must not exceed 8 amps, and the overcurrent protection device must be listed and marked for use with 14 gauge copper clad aluminum. Okay, so there you go. 14 gauge copper clad aluminum is not something that's currently being manufactured because you can't install it. Uh, but if it ever is in the future, and uh, I don't think it will be for the 2026, I think maybe for the 2029 it will be, but who knows? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. But uh, if it ever is allowed, then we'll be able to install it and protect it, and there you have it. Now, the other thing that changed here in 240.4 really uh, didn't need to happen. 240.4H, dwelling units. It says for dwelling unit services and feeders, overcurrent protection complying with 310.12 is allowed. Well, guess what? It already was. Uh, 310.12 is a rule that says, listen, for dwelling units, you can use smaller service conductors and feeder conductors under certain conditions. Now, here's the thing about 310.12. 310.12 establishes the ampacity of those conductors under those conditions. Remember, the definition of ampacity is the amount of current that a conductor can carry under the conditions of use without exceeding its temperature rating. Normally, the conditions of use is an ambient temperature that doesn't exceed 86 degrees F, not more than three conductors in a raceway or a bundle of cables, but hey, 310.12 actually establishes conditions of use and says, listen, if your conductors comply with these conditions, 
we're going to change the ampacity. And those conditions would be supplying a dwelling, not exceeding 400 amps. The entire load of the dwelling is all on one conductor, right? So if you, if you have those conditions, then they change the ampacity in 310.12. Well, if you change the ampacity, then we go all the way back to 240.4, and it said, hey, conductors have to be protected at their ampacity, right? So they are, <laughs> because we change the ampacity in 310.12. That's what 310.12 does. It changes the ampacity of the conductors. It makes more ampacity than you would normally have. So 240.4H certainly doesn't hurt anything. Maybe it removes some disagreements in the field. But from a code purist perspective, it eh, doesn't really need to be in the NEC, but it doesn't hurt anything, so why not have it? All right. Let's keep going into Article 240 in the next video. See you then.